It all seems like a normal day at work and you've arrived at your office at Belco Industries. You see your friendly security guard, your asshole co-workers, and your boss all slowly walk past you. You think to yourself, I wish everyone around me was just dead so I could skip work. However, just mere seconds later, you hear the following broadcast. All employees, lend me your full attention. Hey, it's Jesus. Your chance of survival increases by following my orders. Your task? The voice on the intercom ends up telling everyone inside to kill two of their coworkers or else they will face severe consequences, which we find out is actually four people dying. Of course, all the dumb fucks inside brush this off as a prank. However, as one employee attempts to flee the building, steel shutters close down, preventing escape and trapping everyone inside. Stay. Everyone inside the building rushes to the lobby in an attempt to escape. However, due to the steel shutters, they are unable to do so. The CEO of the company, Barry, is the only one that's able to get everyone calmed down. Here, he establishes himself as a leader. This is exactly what you want to do, since you'll be able to call the shots, get others to do a bidding for you, and not to sacrifice yourself. Since, when people see you as a leader, they're more likely to listen to you, especially in a time when no one else has a voice. The two maintenance workers attempt to burn their way through the steel plates keeping everyone inside. However, they are unable to do so and barely even make a mark. Instead of doing that, I would suggest trying to use a jackhammer and drill through the concrete. This is much easier to do and maybe you can make a hole large enough for people to fit through. A few employees then attempt to get the attention of the guards outside as well as get cell phone reception. Not only can they not get cell phone reception, but the guard outside just simply stares at them. Meanwhile, at the lobby, someone's fucking head is This is because they didn't listen to the voice and killed two people. So the voice executed four random people via bombs implanted into all the employees. Just then, the voice starts giving the next set of instructions. Currently, 76 of you left in the building. In two hours, if 30 of you are not dead, we will end 60 of your lives through our own methods. Everyone in the movie quickly realizes that the voice must be taken seriously. As a result, they split into two factions, one led by Mike, which is generally peaceful, another led by Barry, which is more violent and intent on killing 30 people. Regardless of which faction you choose, you should definitely consider arming yourself. Around the kitchen, there's plenty of knives and other sharp utensils you can use as a stabbing weapon. There's also fire extinguishers around the entire building that you can use as blunt force trauma, as well as chair legs and chairs that you can swing as a ranged weapon. Barry and his crew then attempt to break into the armory after the security guard refuses to give them the keys. They want access to the guns so they can kill 30 people. However, Mike and his crew end up finding out, and there's an intense standoff between the security guard and Barry's crew. Now, personally, the security guard actually wanted to shoot some people in Barry's crew, and it's a very tense moment. What I would do is actually advise the security guard to open fire and kill all those psychopaths because as long as there's less psychopaths, the odds of you surviving will increase. Instead of doing that, however, Mike uses the security guard's pistol to shoot out the gas canister that Barry's crew was using to blow torch open the armory. This may seem like a good idea at first, but the last thing you wanna do is anger the psychopaths and initiate hostilities towards them, because they're gonna be the first people that try to kill you. After the confrontation with Barry's group, Mike's group heads to the top floor where they attempt to signal for help using fabric signs. However, they are unsuccessful and the soldiers open fire and shoot at them. Here, I would instead suggest using the gasoline from the blowtorch below to start a signal fire using the same fabric. If done correctly, a signal fire can be seen from miles away and there's no soldiers that can just walk up and stop it. After coming down from the roof, Mike's group is ambushed by Barry's group. They kill the security guard and take his keys to the armory. This is good if you're part of Barry's group, however, one mistake they made is stabbing him in the stomach. Because if you don't kill him with that one stab, there's a chance that he whips out his pistol and shoots you. The most effective place to stab in this case is the neck, because it's basically a one shot. With weapons in hand, Barry's group then rounds up everyone in the lobby and goes full Hitler mode, where they decide to execute 30 old people who don't have children. However, they end up running out of old people and just start drafting people randomly to be executed. In this situation, you should be lying as much as you can to not get executed. If you don't have kids, say you have kids. Lie about your age, lie about your parents, etc. However, Barry's group forgets to account for the lady hiding in the basement. She turns off the lights and a bunch of people are able to escape their executions. As a result, only 29 people die instead of 30, so 60 people end up getting blown up by bombs. Now, Barry made the big mistake of hesitating before executing people. He took way too long. I suggest him taking on the philosophy of if you're going to hell, keep going. After you've killed one to two people, you're already going to receive the maximum sentence of the death penalty, so you might as well murder everyone inside this movie that you see. Barry would definitely wish that he shot everyone in sight, because just seconds later, he hears the next broadcast. In one hour, whoever has killed the most people will be allowed to live. Now it's time to unleash your inner Rambo and go hunting. If you have a gun, you are at a big advantage. There's only around five guns in the entire building, so you want to watch out for anyone with a gun. You want to start picking up knives, any sharp object that you can use to beat the person next to you to death. You need to go around and search for people, because if you are not actively looking, you might as well be dead. Because if you don't have the highest kill count, the bomb will kill you if someone else doesn't. 
Also, in a situation like this, it might be smart to ally with someone else with a pistol and immediately backstab them and kill them off, because you don't want them stealing your kills. I know kill stealing is quite common in video games, but this is a matter of life and death, so you cannot have that happen. Anyone who's played video games is familiar with bullet conservation, so if you find a bunch of people who are unarmed, do not use your gun to kill them. Instead, pick out your knife and chop them all to death. The movie then begins following Barry, who enters a elevator. He then starts hearing noises above, because there are two co-workers hiding up there. So he starts shooting, one of them escapes, the other one gets crushed to death in the elevator. Alright, now two things. It's definitely not smart to be hiding at any point in this movie, because if you aren't getting kills, you're the same thing as dead. Also, if I were Barry, I wouldn't suggest entering an elevator, because you have a long-range weapon in a pistol. If someone has a bat or a knife, there's a chance they could equalize that distance advantage. So, make sure to take the stairs. Not only is it healthier, but it could also provide you a bigger advantage to use with your pistol, which is longer range than a bat or a knife. Mike's girlfriend then has the genius idea of announcing on the loudspeaker exactly where her and Mike are going to meet up. This is basically asking for people to go and hunt for you. Instead, I suggest communicating in some sort of code. For example, you could say, let's meet on the floor of my birth month. This would be much better than announcing to the entire building who are trying to kill you exactly what floor you're planning to meet on, because at least a few people won't know your birth month, so you'll leave them guessing. Mike's girlfriend is actually able to kill one of the psychopaths named Wendell. However, I don't suggest using an axe if you are a smaller person, especially because it's hard to wield and heavy. Instead, go for a knife or something smaller. Mike and his girlfriend finally meet up with some other friendly co-workers, however they come upon one of the psychos who has assembled a bunch of Molotov cocktails. Personally, I wouldn't use a Molotov cocktail in this situation since you can only carry a few and they're super easy to miss. They're being chased by the other psychopath, but then they are found by Barry, who kills the other psychopath and shoots Mike's girlfriend. Eventually, Mike's girlfriend ends up dying from her wounds. After watching his girlfriend die in his arms, Mike gets re-energized and emerges from the locker he was hiding in to attack Barry. However, Barry was ex-Special Forces and this attempt was basically suicide. Because it's simply unrealistic for an average man to beat up a man with Special Force training. And if I were Barry in this situation, I would absolutely just sit in a corner and camp with my gun. There is literally no reason to go and kill Mike, because at the end of the hour, you have the most kills by far. Eventually, Mike with the help of some plot armor is able to win the fight against Barry. He is escorted by soldiers into a nearby hangar where he meets the man who is the voice. After a brief conversation, he sneaks the little bombs he collected from dead people's heads and places them in the soldier's pockets. He then runs and flips all the switches, killing all the soldiers. He picks up a gun and shoots the voice hundreds of times. Then he is shown on a computer screen with winners from the other Belko experiments. And then a second voice says, End stage 1, commence stage 2. But how would you beat the Belko experiment? Feel free to comment your own theories below, and anything I might have missed. If you liked this video, make sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like that in the future.